Here we go again. More Space Engineers. Another look at my toys edition. So I downloaded, I destroyed my, my starter truck and traded up. I downloaded the Nomad Rover from the workshop just to look at it, and check it out. I ended up loving it so much that we modified it and we're going to keep it. So, I have modified the, the, the hell out of this thing, but um, pretty original paint job, very, very nice setup, has some little side crates here that are not connected, that are just have tools and whatnot in them, uh, had a passenger seat on this side, survival kit. Some, some cool readouts, just like I have in my base. I, I can't quite get around the corner to look at them, but used to be able to sit in the passenger seat right about here and look at them. Similar to this side. It's got a little readout there, and you can look around. And apparently I, I added something and I forgot to change the blueprint, so the projector is trying to fill in that, that block down there. So this has a large cargo container, a medium cargo container. Um, I have modified it to have a hydrogen engine. It has an H2O2 generator, which I installed on the side here where the other passenger seat was. It was mounted on the back, and the connector was mounted on the top, which eh, I didn't like. So... I put the connector on the back, put the hydrogen engine on the top, and building repairs underneath the hydrogen engine there. Uh, the other huge modification that really made this thing ten times better, and I highly recommend doing this for all rovers that you make, like all rovers, is extend out the wheelbase like I've talked about before on rovers. Um, just making it wider makes it far less prone to flipping so make them a bit wider um, it really helps uh, with the stability and the general handling so this even has some super fancy readouts on either side of the cockpit if you look left and right here so that's pretty cool so let's drive out into the sun here Uh, this is running a script called DAS, Driver Assist System. Uh, come on. So some of the functions of DAS is if you have um, downward facing thrusters, upwards or downwards side back front thrusters, uh, it will control those to help stabilize the vehicle. It will also take control of your gyros to help level the vehicle while it's falling um, there's uh, a system that you can enable to help you descend hills where it will break individual wheels to uh, stop lateral mov movement so if your lateral velocity exceeds you know whatever speed limit is set in there it'll start breaking individual wheels to stop you from tipping over and stop you from flying down the hill so you can actually drive down hills um, I played a bit with rotors and come up with this this doesn't actually fit into the blueprint because it's a subgrid anything that you put on the outside of a rotor is a separate grid so it's a little subgrid so if we look at our inventory or if we look at our control panel here and see that piston flip assist is an orange So that means everything on the outside of the piston is on a different grid, but is attached. So what we've got here is you know, a little rotating piston, and I've set it to only rotate 45 degrees here. And to do that, oh, not piston rotor. <laughs> Rotor, flip assist, attach, current angle zero. 
So you have to play with the angles a bit. So I've got upper limit set to zero and lower limit set to negative 90. Um, it doesn't really help, but on the rotor itself, you can see zero and various degrees around the rotor base. I'm stuck on the tires. <laughs> I can't get over to the rotor to look at it. So you can kind of use those once you figure out where zero is. For example, if I had built this uh, piston facing zero, so facing straight up, it would have been a little easier to figure out which way was which. So what this sucker does is it's got a piston attached to it with a wheel stuck to the end. But if I do manage to flip over, we can turn it upright and extend this or leave it extended and attempt to flip it. And we've also got a rotor lock to help with uh, weird physics issues. So after building this and realizing that it would not be in a blueprint and messing around with some systems here, I've also installed these guys on top. Sort of look like smokestacks or exhaust pipes for the hydrogen engine, hydrogen engine. And this, you know, same function to help tip back over if we land on the top. So, yay, fun with pistons. Speaking of fun with pistons, one of the things that sold me on this is just like the um, dual layer suspension made by Wasted Space that I've played with before. It is just awesome. It has these jacks installed into the base here with some buttons, maintenance buttons here to extend the jack. So you can get right underneath your rover. So rolling vehicles, it's pretty cool. Make sure you set the speed on these to pretty low and the power to pretty low. Just enough to lift it up. Uh, another thing is we put, or they put, a blast door edge which is a little bit, quite a bit stronger than a regular steel plate and some wheels on the bottom air. So if we were desperate and lost one of these outer wheels, we could cannibalize these inner wheels. But wheels have grip, wheels have friction built into them. So even though we're on a hill here, we're not sliding down. So we can lower down. It doesn't work all that great if it's an extreme angle, but um, various displays and whatnot. So I also installed some downward facing thrusters that I've set on override. There are six downward facing thrusters that I can control manually to help keep this thing pressed against the ground. Um, other things that I've done is I've extended some armor plating around the solar panels here, which if you're going to put solar panels or you're going to have exposed components, um, you want to have some armor plate just in case you're going to roll the rover. Or same with a ship, a skid plate like we've done here. This was all exposed underneath here. You do not want exposed components anywhere that you can collide with the ground. Always have some armor plate even if it's just half plate. This will give you the option of colliding with the ground and not losing valuable pieces. Uh, another awesome design decision that they've gone with, granted it's a little higher on the PCU value, so the parts, um, but they've gone with a ton of small batteries instead of just a, you know, what, two or three regular size batteries, but they've gone with a ton of small batteries. And what this does is it helps spread the weight around the vehicle. You can see some of the green there in the bottom. Those are small batteries. So they've used the small batteries along the bottom of the rover to add weight to, to lower the center of gravity and spread the weight around the rover. Also, it has the side effect that if you crash this sucker, you will probably still have some battery power somewhere. So that is pretty cool. Um, 
reasons I modified some of this is there was nowhere around the rover to walk up and interact with the main cargo. You basically had to interact from the side seats area with this medium cargo container. And doing that while you're standing on the ground and walking through these wheels on every time was a bit awkward. So having the connector on the back also allows you to do the ejection trick with the connector if you want to unload the vehicle. Uh, this thing came with an ejector on the bottom, which uh, I'm not too sold on because if you drop a large enough rock underneath this thing, it's going to push it way up. But the driver assist system helps keep this sucker really pinned to the ground. So it's a really cool script that I don't really fully, truly understand. <laughs> so, but it will balance friction along the wheels. Uh, override the gyros to help flip you over. If you have downward thrust or upward thrust and downward facing thrusters, as you're in the air, it will individually activate the thrusters to cushion your landings. Um, side, forward, back, it'll help boost you up hills. Or um, you can see our wheels are off the ground there and the gyros are coming into play the driver assist system taking over for us and cranking the gyros to the side but also the wider wheelbase really helps so we're going to flip over on purpose and see if the driver assist system can just crank the gyros and get us back up if not we'll play with our our pistons it's looking like no maybe i i'm not touching anything it's doing everything itself. Pretty cool. Now granted we probably did quite a bit of damage to ourselves. At least a, a few points here and there. It was pretty soft fall. And that's why we've included some build and repairs on this. Not only to help us get started on you know another planet. Or if we use this as a respawn rover. Which I probably will every time in the future from now on. Um... But, you know, if we have the components, we can just repair on the go. It does have a survival kit in it, so it can do some limited manufacturing. But the driver assist system is very, very cool. Very cool script. So that just requires a programmable block and a bit of reading on how to set it up. Because I'm not entirely sure but I got it working, so good enough. One of the other cool little neat features is this has a timer block set to trigger now to engage a parking brake through the driver assist system. And as a side effect, it also triggers the, the parking lights, the red lights there. So they, they kind of glow a little bit when you first activate it. And once you're fully stopped, they get a little bit brighter pretty pretty darn neat um no weapons on the vehicle but it's a pretty durable vehicle with the modifications i've made um these small little bits of top plate help protect the solar panels when you flip over same thing here where it just extends just that tiny bit over the front of the or over top of the solar panel so you'll be resting on armor plate like, if I had had to, I should probably replace this block and the two blocks on top of the hydrogen engine here. This one and this one with heavy armor. Now, that'll add a little tiny bit of weight to the vehicle, but every time I flip over, I'll have that extra security of the block not getting ripped apart. Um, I've been, been trialing this thing all over these mountains back here, and it's handled wonderfully i flipped it over i put it in a crevice i've just been sideways i've lost wheels it, it's great uh if i haven't gone over this before control panel wheels there's this add wheel button if you ever lose your wheels you just activate whatever or drill yourself a small hole underneath the wheel you know so you I would activate uh, the lifters 
on the, the pistons here, the jacks. And then jump in and add a wheel. But if you don't have pistons or jacks, add a few small blocks somewhere to keep it from falling down. Drill a small hole with your drill underneath the wheel. And then jump in, go to wheels, and hit add wheel. And then you can complete your wheel if you have components. So let's not leave this on pistons. Anytime you're using pistons and rotors, make sure that you have clearance before you start attaching any weird stuff to it like this. This was a bit terrifying because if I had the angle wrong, it would collide with the wheel suspension here and possibly just flip this thing into orbit. It really can. It can throw things kilometers away and just do really weird stuff and destroy half the vehicle. So what I built here is my old lifter shuttle. That's all vanilla blocks except for a space ore detector by Azimuth and some build and repair systems. But everything else is, is vanilla. And the blocks used that are not modded, they're modded, are right in here. The ore detector and the two build and repairs um, so you can build it without without any mods. Um, I've attached a modified version of my hydrogen only atmospheric miner here to the top and we're going to take it with us. I've also used another new mod. It's called laser drills. These suckers function just like drills. They're a bit faster and instead of basically having a one one inch reach they will reach out in front of the vehicle so you are a bit safer and it's less stressful to mine um, just because they reach out about this far away from the vehicle so that's well, I don't know six seven blocks something like that it just keeps you away from the face of the rock that you're working on um, like I said, they're, they are a bit faster than regular drills, but other than that, they're, they're just drills. So, it's pretty cool. Alright, so my lifter shuttle here is incomplete. I do not have components for the ion thrusters. That's platinum. I have a little bit of platinum, so I could complete a couple, but I don't need to. This thing has a bunch of atmospheric thrusters to help us break in and break and, and return to gravity. Um, pull medical facilities so if you're playing multiplayer it has a spawn point that other people can spawn at only has the one cryopod has quite a few reactors so it is uranium powered mostly um, you could trade something out for a hydrogen engine uh, one of these build and repair systems would be easy to trade out uh, one of these reactors would be easy to trade out one reactor and then one build and repair and you'd have a hydrogen engine sitting there uh, this does have a warp drive, so it doesn't have any drills or tools mounted on it. doesn't have any guns. I considered add, trying to add a Gatling gun to it, but we'll just run from pirates. And right now, we're on a... It has one rotary airlock on the side and one regular door. So if I'm in atmosphere, we'll just use the sliding door. If I'm in um, a vacuum, I'll use the rotary airlock door seems to work we built some temporary tubes here to refuel this sucker and you see a ton of hydrogen engines just an absolute ton um, the reason it's named the lifter shuttle is it can really really haul a lot of stuff from uh, gravity to space but it also has a lot of thrusters which aren't finished uh, the other use for this is if you have a ion thruster only craft is you can take this sucker and just raise it up to the edge of atmosphere and using only the atmospheric thrusters is position it there as a landing platform or a launching platform for ion thruster only stuff and take it from atmosphere to stratosphere and then stratosphere to space for your ion thrustered ships. 
So that is the other use for this this vehicle and why it has a big flat flat top here. And of course, I love my glass, so it has a giant glass cockpit. Uh, there's room for extra seats if you're playing multiplayer, but it already has uh, four seats and a pilot chair, so lots of room to take people with you. Uh, it's fully airtight. Uh, should be airtight without the ion thrusters built, so you can have a mobile platform to work from in space. Uh, has a regular assembler, a couple cargo, quite a bit of cargo. But it has a regular assembler, um, a basic refinery, so you can generate some of the, the components you need to fix stuff up or get a uh, moon platform or space platform going. So I think on this playthrough, I'm actually going to keep my lifter shuttle because it's really nice for going up and down. Uh, next things I'm planning on doing is I'm going to take my lifter shuttle up to the Raven, the large ship with large, large grid uh, ship with a bunch of thrusters and refineries and stuff up there, and we're going to tear it apart. Um, we're going to go pick up some more platinum, some more uranium uh, from space with our tiny little miner there. Uh, and then possibly build a large uh, trans-atmospheric vessel so I can take my rover and go drop it like on the moon or another planet and start all over somewhere else if I want to. But I haven't built a large vessel in quite a while, so I'm going to try and build a carrier kind of thing that I can take up and down. Not too big, just big enough. And that's that's the trick really. I've started <laughs> and and just torn everything back apart. This is this is the only bits that I liked of, of what I was working on here. As I was trying to make a small shuttle that could carry the miner and I decided I would just use a previous design after a couple hours of messing around with it and just not liking anything. So that's what I've been up to in survival. And again we use that projector rig just like our small grid rig we have set over, over here but this time since we had uranium we went ahead and used a reactor instead of the backup hydrogen uh, hydrogen engine and O2 generator. So she should be all fueled up and have enough power and the batteries to take off. So that's probably what we're doing next here. But I don't want to make you suffer through atmospheric transitions because they just take forever. So we're going to take some steel plate with us. Uh, how much can we carry? Uh, that should be good. And this way, if we get a little bit of damage here and there on either ship, we have something to start our repairs with. We don't have to start from scratch. Uh, grab our oxygen bottles. That uh, should be good. Uh, other things that we could do with the rover here is we could equip... Uh, like a, a landing gear in the front here somewhere like about here and Just put our foot very very gently down on the rover top and pick it up and It is equipped with parachute hatches that are set to uh, Open at one kilometer So there's two in the back and one in the front they are marked with little X's We drop it on another planet so that's another way to use large ships, especially one set up like this one. No. So, she flies! No fuel. No fuel is a byproduct of the Itsy Inventory Manager script, I believe. So we have a lot of... Stupid thing. No fuel, no fuel. Yes, I know. So we are going to just 
go straight up. No fuel. Yep, we're still locked on. But with the four large atmospherics, no we should really generate some nice up thrust. We're going at 300 and almost 400 meters per second now, and we're starting to slow down. So we've already broken atmosphere, and we're still continuing up. We're going to kick on our hydrogens and to continue the speed, carry the speed upwards. i zoom out a bit so that we don't slam into any asteroids. And you can see how quickly we transition with the speed mods. The only problem is, however long it takes you to get going, this particular one, it takes just as long, if not longer, to stop. And we have no uh, dampeners. Oh crap! We have we have no upwards facing hydrogen thrusters. This is not good. <laughs> so this is going to take quite a bit of rolling and spitting to get get down to zero. Oh no, asteroids! We are really just kind of wildly out of control right now because we have no sideways hydrogen thrusters whatsoever. So we're going to have to roll all over the place because the ions are not complete. So what I really should do is just point back at the planet and go back down. Because I did, did not consider this whatsoever. Mistakes were made. And there's a pirate not too far away. But we're really still traveling. We're, we're going like 200 meters per second. So this could be really bad. We could slam into something and navigating without any forward thrust. Alright, we're back into gravity here. We're just going to have to go back to the planet and try again. Actually, no. If we can get positioned here and stopped which might require going back into the atmosphere. Um, we can launch our little guy off into space and go grab some ion components from the Raven to finish some of the thrusters on the ship so that we can actually navigate our lifter shuttle in space. I don't recommend doing this. Even just one hydrogen thruster in each direction would have fixed all of these problems. But th these are the kind of things that you run into when you're playing this game. It's just that it was a bad design, bad decision. So we're really cooking. I don't know which way we're traveling. But we're getting some, some slow down there. And we've got a horizon that we can use. Oh, we're really still flying, but we're slowing down. Yeah, all right. Got to get back into gravity here, though, or into the atmosphere, so we we can fix this sucker up. <laughs> uh, that's what I get. So always make sure you have some kind of thruster in each direction that will work wherever you're going. So I'm gonna stabilize this and probably take off from as high as I can once I can get this thing stopped which is probably going to take a while but as high as I can I'm going to park this thing in the atmosphere and then take off with my little guy here and go up to the raven and get some ion thruster parts pieces parts and we're falling into the uh, atmosphere into planetary gravity right now so yeah that's what I'm going to do but I'm going to leave it here uh, I got a whole bunch of drop frames in this, so I apologize for the quality, but the computer is old. What can you do? So if you watch this and watch me make a horrible design decision, thanks for watching. <laughs>